we're talking about, actually, I, I, I spent a good bit of time, we've talked about this as well, about uh, what's the difference. And um, I want to encourage you, you know, you can get those CDs, or you can go and listen to them on our podcast, or however you want to do that, but I want to encourage you to go back and listen to those. It ought to help you with your understanding of, of what being a believer is all about. Now, I, didn't, I just touched on it. I didn't really go into depth about a lot of things. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things again today. But, but then as I was praying, because I felt like that was the end of it, uh, uh, then I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, now you need to tell people why they ought to be making a difference. Amen. You know that the Lord didn't just save you so you can live out your life and go to heaven. That's not what God's plan or purpose for our lives, our existence. Our existence here is so quick and so, so uh, minimal compared to eternity. There's got to be more purpose than just living every day and going to the next day and what's on TV tonight and Amen. And you are different, and God created you to make a difference. Now, here's one of the things that, 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 that helped me with this, and I'm going to share this with you today, is that you're significant in God's eyes. I don't care who you are, where you are in your Christian life, you're significant to God. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Listen, listen to what it says. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. Now, here's the other side of it. But the face of the Lord still loves the evil and wants to help them. Now, this is New, New Testament, okay? Because a lot of people think that's the case. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You don't want to get on that side. Okay? But the thing is, the good news is that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. His eyes are on you. He's open to your prayers. So well, I just wonder if I asked the Lord about this, what he'd say. You know what the Lord's going to say? I'm open to that. Well, what is it? I I'm open to that. Let let's do it. There's a value. There's a significance. There's an importance to who you are. It says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Wow. That's where you live. That's where we live our lives. That's where God wants us to live our lives. Let me put it to you another way. He has invested everything he has for you to have an impact in life. Well, if God would just give me this, if God would just give me that, wait a minute. What about what he's already given you? Well, if I had more money, that's not, not going to help. You might live a little more comfortable. You might be able to buy a new mattress for your bed. But there's more, there's more, there's more, more power there than you can ever imagine. Stop and think about it. He sent his son to die for you, to release you from the bondage of sin and death. Romans 8, 32 says, If God spared not his only son, but delivered him up for us all, how much more will he freely Give us all things. He's got an investment in you. Now, 
Not only that, the Bible says he raised you up to be heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus himself. Pretty good investment right there. Let me tell you one even stronger than that. He also, listen to this, gave you the down payment on your future by giving you the Holy Spirit. Do you know what that means? That means that the third part of the Trinity dwells on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit of God, and if God reneges on his promise, then you get to keep a third of him. Isn't that what a down payment is? Now, in today's society, we want our money back. But that's not God's, that wasn't God's intent. He wants you to know the value that he has placed on you. So he said, I'm going to go ahead now, not wait to heaven. I'm going to go ahead now and give you my Holy Spirit to dwell on the inside of you to be your counselor to be your comforter, to be your helper, to be your advocate, to be your strengthener, to be your intercessor, to be the one who stands beside you. Well, life is so tough. Well, I'm not through. Not only that, he imparted to you the fruit of the Spirit. You don't have to get it. It's in you. It may not be evident, but it's there. You have to develop it. Love. You ready? Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Ooh, faithfulness. Underline that. Faithfulness. Well, I signed up for the nursery, but I got busy faithfulness. Well, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be in, uh, seen today, but uh, something came up. Yeah, right. Faithfulness. Well, I think I'll go to church next Sunday. Faithfulness. Well, I'm going to call in sick today. I just don't want to go to work. Faithfulness. All right, I'm not going to, I got to move on. Gentleness. All right, you want this last one? Self-control. Well, I just couldn't help myself. Self-control. Did you notice it says self-control? Not somebody else? Not only did he do that, then he gave you the gifts of the Spirit. He gave you three power gifts. Now, I know these don't work all the time for every person, but just understand God's desire here. He gave you the gift of faith. That's not faith for living. That's supernatural faith. That's faith to raise the dead, if you want to. Okay. Okay. Gifts of healing, working of miracles. He, he just, just think about all the things God got. The revelation gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. The communication gifts, I call them. Tongues, interpretation of tongues. Prophecy. All of those were given to you. Uh, just so I can kind of add just a little bit to this, 2 Peter 1, 3 says this, His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things. They've already been given to you. That, that pretty much makes you pretty significant in God's eyes. Pretty valuable in his eyes. Not only that, then he puts you in church. 
Do you know that God has chosen the church to reveal his glory? Well, Lord, just reveal your glory to me. No, the Bible says he reveals his glory to the church or through the church. Y'all still here? Talking about the church in verse 27 of Ephesians chapter 5, it says that he might present the church to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. That he might, listen, that he should be holy and without blemish. That's what God wants for the church. The body, you're the church. Pretty significant. Well, but you know, the church is such a minority today. Let me read you a scripture that that I love the way it says this in the message translation because it nails it. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter one, verse 23, the message. The church you see is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts by which he fills everything with his presence. You think the church is valuable? Significant? The devil, the world, everything that we hear and see today is trying to tell us no. But I'm telling you, yes. We are the restraining force on this earth right now. That's pretty potent stuff. Well, it's so bad. Let me tell you something. If you weren't here, if we weren't here, if we weren't praying, if we weren't standing, if we weren't preaching the gospel, it would, it would be so ugly you couldn't stand it. And the enemy's doing his best to try to keep people out of church, away from church, away from the things of God. And I want to tell you something, it's going to change. Amen. So I would say that God's actions toward you make you a little different. He did it so you could make a difference. That makes you the most significant thing in God's plan. Why? Because God can't have a church without you. God can't work without you. Oh, God can do what he wants to. Yeah, he can, listen to me, he can speak through a donkey. I know you're saying, well, he is today. But, but the point is, I'd be happy with that. But you've got to understand something. The church is not peripheral. The church is the body of Christ. And that's where God speaks and acts and where he fills everything with his presence. That makes you the most significant thing in God's plan. Because it's all about mankind. It's all about humanity. And you're his representation. Listen, I don't mean this ugly, but you don't want God coming down on a mountain. That already happened one time. You know what happened? Everybody ran. Oh, I wouldn't run. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I've actually tried to almost run out from under the presence of God. It got so strong. Imagine if God himself came down in our present state. No, he's using people. Everybody still with me? All right. So the, let me just show you this through this word. And I've preached, used this before, but the word significant means important in effect and in meaning. Do you know what that means? That means your effect on your community, family, and church is important. You make a statement in this world for Jesus, you mean something. Well, nobody will listen to me. That's wrong. 
There's somebody that will listen to you. Oh, yeah. There's somebody out there that will listen to you. They may be tied to a post, but you can talk to them. Sometimes you find people they can't leave and you just talk to them because they can't go anywhere anyway. So you have to understand and realize that, that you, you're important, you're valuable. You add something to life. You add something to the relationships around you. That's the one that, that I looked this up. There were three synonyms. How many of you know what a synonym is? Okay, Lisa, tell them what a synonym is. Help them if they can. But it's, it's similar or uh, in like meaning to a word. So these are synonyms for significant. Okay, these are things that are like it, that identify in the same category. One of them is important, which is valuable. And, and the word there is valuable in content and relationship. Listen to me, don't even, don't, you think people in the world, some people don't like you, they don't want to talk to you, but you have to be around them for one reason or another. Some of them you just got rid of Thanksgiving. But, but listen to me. But that doesn't mean that you're not important and you can't work in their lives and mean something to their lives. Years ago, I'll never forget, I, I had an uncle. And he was, he was, he was Italian and uh, had some ties to Italian families. And, and you know, he never, once I, got, once I got saved, he didn't have much to do with me. Before I got saved, when I was in the restaurant business, when I was drinking, he, he, he thought I was the greatest thing since apple pie. Well, after I got saved, man, he, nothing, nothing. One day I'm at home and I get a knock on my door and guess who it is? It's my uncle. And he was in trouble. And I don't want to go into all the details, but you know what? You know the first person he asked for help was me. You don't know what relationship is going to do something. You don't know that one moment in time when God could use you in a, in a relationship. The other thing, uh, the, another word about uh, significant is the word substantial. It means you, it consists of something real, something true, something essential. Do you understand and know that believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is something real? It's something true. It's something that's essential. And people in, people in their lives don't have that. They don't have it. And it may not be today. It may, may be tomorrow. But at some point in time, they're going to need you. Because you have the essentials. You have the truth. You have what's real when all they have is imaginary, unusable things. The third synonym is very interesting. The third synonym is the word pregnant. Now, you'd never think that, would you? It, 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 it's, it's, it is a... It is a Synonym for the word significant. It means that there's something on the inside, and we know in regard to, to, to women that are pregnant, there's something on the inside <clears throat> that is working that is about to produce something. Do you understand that you're significant? There's something on the inside of you that is about to, to produce something? When God says you are significant, you are pregnant with his future. You're pregnant with his future. Let me show you this in the Word, okay? First Peter chapter 1, listen to this, verse 23. Having been born again, 
not of, incorrupt, of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So you have been born again. That means you have changed your identity and literally God has changed your DNA. Let me give you an example of this. This will help you. And it, um, before I got saved, I was in, you know, I was in the restaurant business and I went to work for this company and they gave me this test called the predictive index. Okay. And basically what it does is it tells them where your strengths, where your weaknesses are and your energy level. So I took this test and I was right on the mark for what they wanted because I was an administrative person. I was a decision maker. I, and, and, and I could do these different things that they needed for me to do. And, and, and I can still see that graph in my mind. It goes up, goes like this. So after I got saved, it was a while after I got saved, uh, maybe a year or so, I was working for this company and they wanted to give me that test. So I was really interested to see what it was going to produce. Do you know it produced a totally different pattern? And basically, I was either supposed to be a social worker or be a minister or be someone who dealt with people. The graph went like this, just like that. Same test. One before I got saved and the other after. You know what that meant? God changed my insides. He put a different DNA on the inside of me. Hallelujah. I thank God he did. And that is that DNA, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, listen to me, that is your preferred future from God. You know, you don't have to walk in it. You don't have to walk in it. It's what God wants. I, I have to admit, I don't believe we all reach our potential. I'm, I think probably one of the things we're going to be sad about is what we could have done and what we did do. I don't think any of us reach our potential. But the point is, it's in there. And we ought to be pursuing it. All right, I don't want to get hung up on this, but you've got to hear what I'm saying this morning. So there is a preferred future for you. It says over in Romans, God, God said there is a good, there's an acceptable, and then there's a perfect will of God. Which one of those three do you want? Are you satisfied? Well, I'm good. I want perfect. I want per I'm not there yet. I hadn't reached it, but I want perfect. I want, I want all that God has. I don't want just good or acceptable. Well, you know, I'm better than most. I want that perfect. And it's in you. You've just got to make up your mind that you're going to allow it to work out in your life. Why? Because God wants you to make a difference. It says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, listen to this. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Just stop right there. Is born of God. The angel told Mary that there was a holy thing that was in her and it was of God. It was the son of God. She was pregnant with something. And it was the Son of God. And it, when Jesus was born, he was born with God's DNA to do God's will perfectly on the earth. No corruption. And he did that. Jesus walked a life mapped out for him through the Word and the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but that's the life I want to live. Now, here's the thing about 
God's map, it's not like human maps. You know, if you want to go somewhere, you know, I just recently took a trip to Kansas and it mapped it out and it's the quickest route and it's north, south to north. I mean, that's not the way God's maps work. Sometimes we kind of get frustrated with that. Why? Just walk it. <clears throat> Just walk it. Go look at the children of Israel when they were delivered from Egypt. Go look at the map. Not saying that's what you ought to be, but anyway. So listen to this. Jesus became the most significant man to ever live because there was something on the inside of him that had to come out. What was it? God's plan. He was pregnant with God's plan. Now hear me today because God has that for you. It's his preferred future for you, but you've got to make up your mind you want more. Well, I'm satisfied. I got a good job. My family's okay. That's wonderful. But is that it? Well, you know, I'm about to retire. What are you going to do when you retire? I'm going to sit back and watch life go by. Really? I had a guy the other day, uh, I was checking out at a, at a store, and he said, well, Pastor Sam, I'm so sorry that you retired. I said, what? Somebody told me you retired. I said, they lied. <laughs> you, you, you think when you get to retirement age, God's plan just cuts off? I don't think so. It may change. You may have other things that he wants you to do. But hey, Caleb said when he was, you know, he was an old man. He said, give me this mountain. He was still ready. You can't live your life that way. Amen. Listen to this scripture. And I've read this many times in this series, but I want to read it again out of Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 10, the Amplified Bible. Listen to what it says. We are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those, what? Good works, which, you ready? God predestined, planned beforehand, for us to take, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life. I want to live the good life. And I want to tell you something. Living the good life is not what the world calls the good life. Living the good life is living God life. Living his life. When you recognize the significance of your life, you begin to be sensitive to what, listen to this, to what God wants in every area of your life. What's valuable? What's important? What does this mean for my life? Is this what God wants? Is this God's will for my life? Once you start doing that, you would be amazed at what God will do because then you become obedient. Your effect begins to be felt. The dynamic, listen to this, the dy dynamic of your life and those around you begin to be influenced by you and by your faith. Are y'all listening to me? Well, people are going to think I'm crazy. They already think you're crazy if you come to this church. <laughs> so what's, what's the big deal? You have influence. Just think about it this way. If this coming year, no, I don't want to give you that much room. By the end of the year, you touched one person for Jesus and brought him to church. 
there would not be room in this building to, to seat them. If every person just did their part. I'm not promoting church growth. I'm trying to get you to understand how quick and how valuable and how significant you are to the kingdom of God. Well, they won't come. Well, I did. I had to go on a Thursday night, but I went. Somebody invited me and I went. Guess what happened? I got saved. And they weren't even preaching a salvation message. Don't kid yourself into thinking, well, they're not going to understand our church. They're not going to understand what you're saying. It isn't about me. It isn't about our worship. It's about the Holy Spirit. Somebody gets saved on the street. Listen, that's great. But if, if nobody brings them to church, it's like taking a baby and throwing them out on the freeway and saying, make it on your own. It ain't going to happen. The dynamic of your life changes. You begin to influence by your faith. Circumstances can be adjusted by a simple prayer. Do you know how many people just need a simple prayer from you? How that could adjust their life? Prayers are free. No obligation. God hears you. What about just releasing the love of God to people or the power of God into someone's life? Those are all at your disposal. Well, God wouldn't use me. Do I need to start from, point? let me go back to the beginning here. I don't think you got it. You are significant right where you are right now. Mordecai told Esther in a time of great need, it is possible, now listen to what he said to her, it is possible that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Is it not possible that we are at a time, and I believe we are, at a time in history where you are needed for the kingdom of God in a greater way than you ever have. And you've got to get rid of your stinking religious thinking of I've been around so long, it don't matter. It does matter. You matter. You matter. You know the least church bunch of people today? You'd think it'd be the young people, wouldn't you? You know who it is? Baby boomers. Because they all, oh, I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, been in church all my life. I'm going to take it easy. It's not time to take it easy, folks. I want to be caught working in the end for the kingdom. I believe God is, 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 is setting people up, being poised to do something extraordinary. And it doesn't have to be great. It just is extraordinary. There was, a, there was a young lady, very young, I think she was still a teenager, maybe, maybe out of her teens, who went to church. She got saved. So she went back home and told her sister about what had happened to her. And it was one of those churches, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So her sister said, well, I better go with her and check this out. She got saved. Came home. Told another sister. Now, this is a true story. Another sister. And the other sister said, well, I'm going to come see. Got saved. Came home and said, I got saved. And her husband said, well, good for you. And she started going to church. And he gave her an ultimatum. If you don't quit going to church all the time and staying out all the time at church, this isn't going to work. And she said, I ain't changing. You're just going to have to come see for yourself. And he said, well, I'm either going to have to leave her or go with her. So he went to church. Y'all still with me? You still following this? Okay. So 
He got saved. And they all got filled with the Holy Spirit. That couple, you ready? That couple happened to be Becky and I's best friends when we were in college. Well, still we're best, not, not as close, but because we moved around. And that was at the same time that I had left Becky and was living like a heathen because I was. Now listen to what I'm saying. You ready? Okay. So God supernaturally got us back together. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Got us back together. And guess what? We ended up in Houston, Texas, where this couple, Craig and Mary Giddens, happened to be. They took us to church. I got saved. Becky got back in fellowship with the Lord. We got filled with the Holy Spirit. Because of one teenage girl. One person. That's not the end of it. Out of that, now listen to me. Out of that, another family that were related got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Were members of our church for many years. And now their two sons, in fact, one of them's here today, Rob, Robert, excuse me, and Julie. Floyd are here today. Their other son pastors in Mansfield and in Stonewall and in Manny. One person. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Would you like to be that one person? Uh, amazing. One person. That is significant. That's the way God works. Now, here's, here's the tragedy. Because you're probably like, well, you know, so-and-so brought me and I got saved. Well, is that the end of the line? Really, is that the end of the line? Did you stop it right there? Was that the end? It's kind of like those, those letters that you write, you know, those chain letters. And, you know, somebody stops it. They don't write another one. Well, that's what happens with Christians. They're just happy that they got saved. Well, wait a minute. What went into you getting saved? I know what went into me getting saved. It's valuable to me. It's important to me. What went into me getting saved? And I don't want to, I don't want to be the one who doesn't send the letter to the next person. And you've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life and make a difference in other people. And, and quit, listen, don't get upset with me. I said, we all have issues. We all need people to pray with us, to stand with us, and, and God to work. But listen to me. If it's only all about you, you're not going to get every, anywhere very far in life. You start making your goal other people, you'd be amazed at what God makes happen for you in your life. Because God created us for that purpose. Big things can happen out of seemingly small things. You think about that. That one teenage girl literally birthed this church. You're here because of her. And I don't know who invited her to church. Go past that. Go back to that. But it, 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 it works through life. It's a flow of life. And it never stops. And I, I tell old stories just so I don't want to, can't identify stuff. But, but when God spoke to Becky and I to move back to Shreveport from Houston, Texas, I had a job. I had a good job. I had favor. On my job. But I, we knew we were supposed to move back to Shreveport. Didn't say we wanted to. We knew. 
I went in my boss's office. I'm a young Christian. I ain't been saved two years maybe. To tell him that I, I'm going to have to move back and I'm going to have to give up my job. And I walked in his office and he was on the phone and he saw me, waved me into his office and I'm sitting down and he's talking to somebody on the phone. And he said, uh, well, he's sitting right here. Wait a minute and I'll ask him. He put his hand over the phone like this, four cell phones. He looked at me and he said, this is so-and-so. Uh, he's the regional manager in Louisiana. He wants to know if you'll move to Shreveport and take over the district office in Shreveport. I said, tell him yes. And he went, wait a minute. You know, because you couldn't, back then you couldn't transfer business from one. You know, you can't take that business. You know what's going to happen. I said, tell him yes. And I told him the story after he hung up. Well, he was a spirit-filled Christian. He understood perfectly. Oh, that just happened to you. It'll happen to you. We came to Shreveport, needed a house. We were listening to Christian radio, heard an advertisement about a, a, a home builder selling houses. Called him, said, we're interested in a house. We didn't have a dime, didn't have any money. We looked at a house. We love this house. But we don't, we don't have a down payment. And, you know, we don't know. And I think he said, go ahead and move in. Didn't we go ahead and move in? We moved into the, he said, just go ahead and move in. We'll work it out. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> the doorbell rings one night. It's late. I don't know. It was, I don't remember how late it was, but it was late. I go to the door, and it's the builder. He said, the Lord spoke to me and told me to give you this. He handed me an envelope with a down payment. Now, the guy's giving me the money to buy the house that the money he's going to make off of it will cover the down payment. Oh, that's because you're special. It's because I'm significant. Just like you're significant. I, listen, I want to tell you something. I could tell you stories all day like that. Not, not one, all day like that. Not because I'm somebody special, but because I'm significant and so are you. God will use, it may not be that great. It may not be anything spectacular, but I think it can be. Depends on what you're, li if you're listening. Depends on whether you're willing. I've told this story many times, but, but, but I, I'll just tell it again just because I thank God he was willing to use me. We were driving, Beck and I were driving to Dallas. Did get off for a few days. Driving down the interstate. Car pulls up beside me. There's a guy and he's pointing like this. I thought something was wrong with the car and I kind of slowed down for a minute. He slowed down and pulled off. I realized there wasn't anything wrong. I just kept driving. Well, he catches back up with me. I said, I ain't pulling over. He thinks I'm pulling over. He pull, third time, pulls up beside me and I see tears in his eyes. I pulled over. He pulled over behind me. I, and and uh, I, I said, are you okay? He had, was crying. He said, I was driving down the interstate and I passed you and I heard this voice tell me that man can help you. So we pulled off to the next exit. His wife had left him and he, he was having all kinds of problems. And I prayed for him right there. Just, just pray for him right, 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 right there on the side of the road. He became a member of our church for a number of years. I hadn't seen him lately, but, but he became a member of our church for many years. Wouldn't you like God to use you like that? What was the last time when you walked through Walmart and you felt a nudge towards somebody and you went to the next aisle? Or you saw somebody looking at you and maybe had a tear in their eye and you said, I don't want to get in the middle of that. Come on, Come on now. 
You are valuable. You are significant. Has nothing to do with your age. Has nothing to do with your education. It has nothing to do with anything, listen to me, but being a willing vessel. And when you are, God can use you supernaturally. I got one more before I quit. Told this before too, but, but we, we have a lady in our church, been in our church for many years. She, I, don't, I don't even know how long she's been in our church. <clears throat> but she was a housekeeper for this fairly well-off couple. And this lady was sitting in her living room, den, study somewhere, reading, not the Bible, just reading something. And the housekeeper walked by and she stopped and said, I just heard a voice. The housekeeper looked at her and said, really? It said, go out on Merriweather Road tonight. The housekeeper says, well, my church is on Merriweather Road. No, it couldn't be that because it's, it's a Thursday night. It, was, it, was, wasn't, you know, it wasn't a church night. And she said, we're having special meetings tonight. Came with her husband, both of them, they got saved. Significant financial help to build the television station that we had for a number of years. Are you kidding me? It doesn't matter who you are. God wants to use you. If you have a hunger for it, He'll use you. He's invested everything he's got in you so that you can be used. I want to be used. I want to be that person that, that I could start that chain for somebody. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you like to be the origin of a chain? Somebody that never been to church, their family never been to church, and you start that chain, it's in you. But if you ignore this message today and just go out living your life, you're going to find out that your life is not going to be what you expect without following God's plan and His fullness for what He wants for your life. But when you do, wow, it gets awesome. It's exciting. Not every day. It can get dull. But I want to tell you something. When it happens, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. You know, a lot of things you can just initiate yourself. If you just will. Let people know, hey, I'm a believer. Can I pray for you? Can I pray with you? You don't have to lay your hands on them and cast something out of them. Just pray for them. Let God handle it. Trust me. He'll take care of the rest. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you today. And Lord, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice, whether here or watching online, Father, maybe they're crying out today for your goodness to work in their lives. That they can walk with Jesus, live a, a life full of good fruit. Maybe they're not even saved. But Father, I pray for them right now that you work in their lives by the power of your Holy Spirit. I, today, I just want to do this different. I want everybody just to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I desire with all my heart to follow your plan to be significant while I'm on this earth, to make an impact while I'm on this earth. And I thank you that Jesus is my Lord. I choose to follow him and the plan that you have for me to live the life you have for me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Kedra, come and share with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you, Pastor Sam. Can you give it up for our pastor today? Tell them them about, real quick, tell them about when you were on staff and the Lord spoke to me about you doing something else Mm -hmm. and how that same day about the deal with the college. Oh, wow. Okay, well, praise God. Well, um, many of you may or may not know, I was on staff, uh, ministry staff here for a few years, and one Monday night during prayer, um, the Lord spoke to Pastor Sam and essentially told him that I would not fulfill my purpose in that role. And I mean, I knew I was where I was supposed to be for that season, but the season had changed. And um, we had the conversation and uh, I moved, stepped out in faith in what the Lord uh, was instructing me to do. And essentially the, the day I was to be the last day on my staff here, um, I, the president and the dean of Louisiana Baptist University was asking me to come on board to teach Uh, collegiate level courses there uh, for their doctoral program. So the Lord has a plan. If you're just willing to step out in faith, he'll work out all the details. I didn't know the details. I just stepped out in faith and he has every since then been working it out on my behalf for his glory every since then. So I encourage you to do whatever it is the Lord is instructing you to do. If you were one of the people who prayed that prayer that Pastor Sam just led us in, I want to encourage you, don't stop there. Like he said, don't let that be the end of the chain of uh, letters of your life. I want to encourage you, fill out that card I mentioned earlier in your seat back. It's called the card. You can just indicate there that I prayed the prayer. Or if you want to just indicate I'm ready to be significant in the earth. I want to make a difference. I want my life to have impact. Uh, Just indicate that on the card so someone can reach out to you and help guide you through whatever your next step is in order to make a difference for whatever it is God's called you to do. I want to remind you also, uh, we've given you several opportunities and ways that you can make a difference in this holiday season. Don't forget that today is the last day to nominate a child um, or a family to be recipients of Timeless Toys. Uh, If you want to sponsor a child, just go out to the lobby where you see the balloon canopy and pick up a profile. Uh, You and some friends can get together, sponsor a child. And lastly, just like I mentioned, God spoke to Pastor Sam on my behalf at Monday Night Prayer. You have an opportunity to come to Monday Night Prayer. Uh, We do it the first Monday of each month, so our next one will be Monday, December the 5th. Come out and intercede on behalf of others, and you never know. God may speak to you about what your next steps are in your life. Amen? All right. I think that's enough. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you so much for what you have imparted into us today. I pray that it does not fall on deaf ears, that we will act on what it is the Holy Spirit is ministering to our hearts right now. And we thank you for the significance that we are pregnant with. And we pray, dear Lord, that we do not uh, have stillbirth or that we abort prematurely that which you have conceived on the inside of us. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.